Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us on One on One today. Today on One on One, we'll be focusing on orphaned and vulnerable children in Nigeria. An orphan is defined as a child that has lost one or both parents. The loss of one parent classifies a child as a single orphan and the loss of both parents has a double orphan. In many cases, an orphan may still live with a primary or extended family. Globally, it is estimated that there are approximately 153 million children who have lost a father or mother. 17.8 million of them have lost both parents. Now, UNICEF estimates that at least 2.2 million children in the world live in orphanages. Now, my guest today is Adderunke Comfort Unipedi. She's a graduate of Electrical Electronics Engineering from the University of Adoikiti, Ekiti State. She went further to pursue her passion in business development, sales and marketing, and client accounts management. She's the founder of the NGO called One Child, One Care Initiative, an initiative that supports less privileged children in orphanages, and the society. The NGO was created to support the well-being of less privileged children in orphanage homes and the society. Thank you, Adair, for joining us. Thank you for me. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, I want to find out why did you decide to start this NGO? You are an electrical engineer. You're doing well in your career. Which is how you concern other people begin. <laughs> yeah, I get to hear that all the time. And basically, like um, um, I tell, I say it all the time that uh, as well that. It's beyond your cost of study. It's a passion. It's what you just want to do. You can influence the society in different ways, regardless of the means of income or whatever you know you want to do. So it's it's just a passion. I've always loved um, you know dealing with children and uh, you know having interactions with them and all that. So growing up, even as a teenage girl, I I teach in in church in Sunday school that we call it those days. Then in Alican Church, then I was I was the youngest female you know teen teacher at that time. I was teaching children and I had fun teaching them. And I don't know maybe it's a gift. I always find a way to connect you know with them. So it was just something that natural comes come for me. And so it wasn't difficult when I felt that there was a need somewhere. I saw the need and I felt beyond the fact that we go to orphanages to drop food stuff, you know, to donate money or something. I feel that these kids don't have the same privilege we have of a family and part of every child's right is the gift of a family. And mm. so I felt that, okay, we could be the family that they never or they have, but not responsible for them. Okay. So, that was so um, you know, like I defined earlier about, you know, an orphan if someone has lost one parent or both parents. But are all the children in the orphanages that you visit, is it that they've lost is it all of them that have lost their parents? No, or do we have no. situations where people bring their children to the orphanage and say, Look, yes. I can't take care of this child anymore? Yeah. Yes. Oh, they are. Yes, so yeah. please but tell not, us. About not that. all the children are motherless or orphans. Yeah. There are some kids that still have relatives, either the maybe at childbirth lost a mom and there's the father, but of course due to financial capabilities, maybe they can't take care of, there's no relative that is re can be responsible. So families do take these kids to the homes, but the homes have the um, authorization to go through the process, which is going to allow her get the authorization. So you can't keep a child without any legal details. So they register these children, they have to, it's, it's part of the, the, you know, the things, the process they go through. Okay. So they register, and the parents, of course, make pledges to come back and visit and check on these children, but of course, Many don't, many don't. So after a while, if they can, they trace, they check them, they try and trace their family homes and all that. Some keep to it, a very few, an handful keep to it, but a whole lot don't. And they find out that they are no more living there or they even give, you know, a relative that doesn't know anything about the situation. So at the end of it, they maybe after so many search and they can't still trace them, they become, so to speak, on paper orphans, hmm. you know, like that. Okay, so now let's talk about, you know, the orphanages and the well-being of the children. Because, like, you know, especially in, in our environment, everybody t goes there to take a picture. Yes. You and I were discussing earlier how some people use it to try and, you know, get for scholarship or things somewhere else and say, mm. oh, I've worked with this NGO. Yes. I, but nobody really talks about the well-being, the well-being of the children at the, you know, at the oh. orphanages. Yeah. So how does your NGO ensure that beyond us giving full stuffs and clothes and a little bit of follow-ups, how do you now follow up to ensure that the children are, are okay? That's why um, our NGO, our own focus is, yes, we deal with children in society and in the orphanage, but we pick the orphanage first because we felt we needed continuity 
We needed to be able to check performance and to be able to check growth as well. And for you to do that, we can't do all the orphanages. We have had requests to come to outside Lagos, come to Ogun, come to Oyo, come and support this orphanage. But ours is not just come and visit and go. We take time to study and understand the student. We know them by names. They know us. If you go to our, we call them our primary focus orphanage. They are like our project. And we've been with them minimum of five years, which any of those. So we don't just come when it's festive period. We visit on regular basis. We have welfare donations that we send to them regularly. We pay school fees. We do medical check up for them. And we know them mentally as well. We know the ones that academically they are driven. We would want that skill driven. They want to learn skills. So we sit down with them. We talk even up to the point of, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? And of course, like normal kids will be like, ah, but definitely over time, when we keep, when they see us often, they, we are in their faces all the time, they open up to us. We have, we've had two cases that um, were molested by the founders of, um, the child of a founder of an orphanage, but it's closed down right now. The okay. orphanage is closed down. Fantastic. So we've had, so for them to open that much to us, it has to be trust, you know, and for you to build trust, it has to be consistency, mm -hmm. and they have to see genuine love, that you truly, truly care for them. We do empowerment with programs for them. We do teen section. We have okay. our um, NGO members that sit down and share with them their own personal stories, you know, and they see that. So if this uncle that is looking so handsome, so cool, can become this, then I can become it. You know, most of the kids that we we support are some are about ten of them are investing right now. College of Education investees and you know doing great works. You know, and so and we see growth. You know, as we get to pay their school fees, we request for the school performance. We call the schools. Some of the schools know us. We call the schools as well. So it's just beyond visit for us. The well-being is what is our focus. And the well-being is, of course, encompassing everything, their health, their, you know, their welfare, their mental health, and every other thing. So that's okay. what we're doing. So now let's talk about staff. So you, I like the fact that you mentioned about two of the children in one of the orphanages being yeah. molested. Yes. But what about the staff? How are the staff trained to, you know, the well-being also of the staff, and then are the staff properly trained? Because some people just are like, look, I don't have a job. These orphanages are open. Let me yeah, just, let me go, just there go there and work. What yes. about the training of the, of the Funny, Funny enough, we, let me say we've been lucky with the orphanages we've been working with. We, we've been, um, they've been like, um, the founders are very focused people. And so we've, most of them, I think it's only one or two that the staff have left. All the staff that we met, and the homes are still the same staff that they and I know that some of the founders do training, internal trainings for them, speak with them and do trainings. And we've also had, you know, one or two. We, we even want to, that, that's an area that we want to venture more into, you know, beyond the physical training, how to handle babies, how to do that. Of course, their own development as well. Yes, they, they have elderly people, they have very young people as well, they have both age categories. And so we are also venturing into training them because beyond the fact that they are caring for these children, they also have their needs. So when we go there, we never visit without taking care of the staff too. We give the staff something. Because if you don't have, and you give me to give someone, I will take for what you give me to give someone. So we give the staff, we say it and we tell the founders of the home that specifically this is for the staff. Even when we are going to transfer funds, we'll, say, we'll put it there, staff welfare. Because we know that the salaries definitely can't be enough. Some of us are working in corporate organizations and we still complain how much more you know, those working in orphanages. So these are things that we speak with them. We, we sit down with them. When, when we go visit, we don't spend 10 minutes. We spend hours. We spend two hours. We spend minimum of one hour. So we must be able to get something new about the children and about the staff. We even call them randomly, the staff. I know most of the matrons of the orphanages. We call them and we say, ah, Mommy, how are you doing? We've not seen you. They even call us. This December, we didn't do orphanage visit this December. We had a community outreach. And all of them called and said, ah, we didn't see one child, one care. Hope all is well. And we reached out to them that, oh, OK, we are com we're definitely coming back February for your normal event. You know, So that's how communicable we have with them. We communicate so well with them. So, But like you mentioned, it takes more for the um, and on, which are the staff. They need more. They need more corporate trainings. They need more exposure because they're caring for other people's children. How about theirs? You know, some of them also, but they have been warned not to share personal needs so that, of course, they don't miss the focus, focus of why they're there. So we also need to be careful. Thing. Yes, discipline has to take place too so that they don't, they don't break protocols and because that's, that would be very risky on the image of the home. So they don't share personal needs, but we know that they have it. So ours is to stretch forward, you know, and reach out to them. But we'll definitely do more regarding okay. the trainings. All right. Thank you for that. So we'll just take a short break. When we come back from the break, we'll be talking about adoption 
um, okay. processes because you know some of the children in the orphanages um, you know are adopted yes. so yes. we'll be talking about that okay. right after this break please don't go anywhere stay with us it's still one-on-one -on -one.